everybody. I'm Molly here with Rose City RV of Michigan and today we're at our Tawas location. I'll be going over the 2024 Puma 18 RKX with you today. So we're going to start right here with the solar on the side. This is going to be directly wired to the battery on a 12 volt here. So if you want to add a solar on the side and get this portable kit, you're going to want to make sure that it has the controller built in. If you go with their option, they're definitely going to give you that. But if you go with a random Amazon purchase, you're going to want to make sure you have the controller so you're not overcharging your battery, sending too much voltage to those because that can definitely happen. We also have this nice pass through storage here that goes all the way through. With addition to that, you also have a solar pre-wire kit for the roof. What that is, is if you wanted to add solar to the roof, this in particular model does not come with solar already installed. However, the wires are all ran there for you, so you can add that fairly easy. All you're gonna do is drill through this hole right here and those wires are there and the connectors are up on the roof. We'll show you that. So you can see this goes all the way through to the other side underneath of that bed. So there's a significant amount of storage there for a small travel trailer. Next we have the nice solid steps. These ones are made by Moride. Lippert also makes their own version. I really like these steps, especially on a smaller travel trailer. One thing people don't realize that these do, when you had the old metal flip out steps, when you step on it, it would bounce and move the whole trailer. And stability is a big concern that people have. So this having ground feet when you step on it now you're not bouncing and putting your weight on the trailer so if somebody's sleeping inside it doesn't feel like you're going over railroad tracks on top here we have the led power awning this is going to be a full length awning so again another feature that you don't normally get with a smaller trailer is a full length awning um, and especially that led strip it's just nice at night you want to kick that on you also have the um, amber lens light for at night. It's not as attractant for the bugs, so that's a plus. Outside speakers are located right here. Those are gonna be powered inside by the radio that has a traditional radio. It also has Bluetooth capabilities, so you can jam out with your phone if that's what you're into. Common question we get a lot is what is this bracket for? This bracket matches the inside TV bracket. If you're interested in having an outside TV, you just get the other side that, that mates with it, pop it on the TV, slide it right down there. And next to the TV bracket, you're also going to have your coax, of course, in case the, the park has cable or if you have your own satellite hookup. And then 110 outlet located here to power up that TV. Furnace exhaust is located here big thing I always make sure I tell people this exhaust extremely hot so it being on the awning side make sure you're not putting a table or anything up close to that while the furnace is running um, it will burn things it will catch things on fire I've seen that a few times so you don't you don't want that to be you this unit comes with an outside shower which is located on the other side but it also comes with a spray port people often say what do I need that for well it's kind of really for anything spraying off your feet spraying off the dog the outside shower on the other side is going to give you that hot option this is just going to be cold water though gas electric water heater puma does that on all of their models to my knowledge um, so you're always going to get that gas and electric function another thing that that other manufacturers cheap out on is going to be giving you just a gas only water heater with that being said, typically people have electric service if they're at a campground. I mean, not always, but that's a common thing. And you can run that on electric to save you a little bit of gas there. Another feature that you don't normally see in a small unit is this outside kitchen. Gives you a little refrigerator. Also this nice cooktop here um, that you would treat just as a cast iron. It's got a little grease drawer there to catch that for you so you can be your own hibachi chef if you want. Moving on to the back, we have our spare tire located here. Um, that's a plus that comes with it. There's no extra charge for that. Also wired for the backup camera. One thing I say a lot about the backup camera is get a backup camera, not a divorce. 
because you would not believe the amount of people that stand outside of their RV at 9, 10 o'clock at night and fight and argue about where their RV is being parked. So get the backup camera. That's going to give you a wide angle when you're backing up. If you put bikes on the back like a lot of people do, or if you put an accessory cart back here, that will allow you to see that when you're going down the road. That's activated just simply by your running lights. So if you turn the running lights on your vehicle, it's going to power up your camera. You don't have to be in the backup mode like a lot of people think. If you just turn on those running lights, that's going to let you see everything back here. And Furion puts marker lines on that as well. So you can adjust that if you want, but it'll tell you if you're 5, 10, 15, 25 feet away from an, a tree or a obstruction that might cause you some problems. So that's a nice feature. Your cable satellite hookups are going to be located here. Um, so these are the inlet side. You're going to hook those up here if you want to get signal up into the TV inside. This model does not come with a TV. That is an add-on. These are your manual stabilizers. There's going to be four on this coach, one on every corner here. These are not to level the coach. We get that question and unfortunately we get that after people have buckled them. Um, they are not designed to take the weight of the coach. They are simply only there to stabilize you. So that's all their uses. Four inch square bumper. You can store your sewer hose in there like most people do if you like. It just kind of keeps all the grossness outside, if you will, instead of inside of the compartment located there. If you look underneath here, we're going to have our black and our gray outlets here. Black is the three inch. That's going to be for the toilet and then you have your gray or your galley as some people call it but that's going to be for your sink and your shower um, with that i usually tell people when you're done camping and you're ready to go dump your tanks the funnest part of the whole adventure everyone loves it not so with that being said you're going to want to hook up your hose here so you pop this cap off you put your new sewer hose on Put the end of it into the sewer dump before you pull that valve. Otherwise you'll make a mess and everybody at the sewer dump will be crabby. So put your sewer hose on, make sure you open that latch, put it in there. I always tell people pull the black valve first, which is the three inch. They always put a black handle on there to help you and a gray handle on the other. By pulling the black handle first and dumping that, that black tank toilet water and then dumping the gray or the galley tank you're gonna allow the rest of that waste to kind of get flushed through there. Um, so it's just kind of less gross when you take it off. Pop the cap back on and you're ready to go for the next event. So, located here, this is a little different than what they used to do. They have now put a hose connection here on the fresh water. Um, I'm not a big fan of this because Let's say you're camping at a state park or at a campground that doesn't have a hose hookup. It makes it really difficult for you to be able to put water into your coach for the onboard tank because that's what that fresh water connection means right there. I make a pump kit for this. We'll probably make a video for that one day so I can show you how that's done. Um, this typically is a round cap that you take off and you put the hose in there. So I will be letting Puma know my opinion about that. Um, and, that and, and you can definitely may use this, but it's got to be with a pump adapter if you don't have water. City water connection. This is going to be the port that you hook the hose straight up to if you want to use the water pressure right there at your campsite from the campground. Um, I always suggest a water pressure regulator for people because if that campground's low or empty, you're going to have a whole lot of pressure at that one, and I've definitely seen that do some damage. So consider that if you're an early spring camper or a late fall camper when there's not a lot of people around. This is that outside shower that I kind of referred to earlier. This is going to have hot and cold, looks just like a regular shower, hot and cold handle in there. So you could take an outside shower if you wanted. This is going to be where a 30 amp hookup is. That's just a cable hatch that kind of hides it, keeps it out of the weather. Um, this comes with a 25 foot 30 amp power cord that's located in there. 
if you buy from us at Rose City RV, we will give you the additional 110 adapter to adapt that down if you want to keep your batteries charged and such, and such at home. Um, we do not charge you for that like a lot of dealers do. These are going to be a larger axle, a larger single axle. If you notice here, this is going to be a six lug. That's going to be a 5,200 pound axle, so that's going to give you a lot more cargo carrying capacity. That's something to keep in mind if you're buying a single axle. You don't want to overweight that axle, and that's going to be what they refer to as the GVW, which is the gross vehicle weight, which is the total weight of the vehicle plus all your content. So if you think about it and you have a couple tanks full, you know, at, at wastewater or regular freshwater, you're eight to nine pounds a gallon. Wastewater is a little bit heavier because it's got some tissue and other things in it, but that adds up really fast. You got a 40 gallon tank. You can kind of do the math there. So you want to make sure you have enough cargo carrying capacity. So hats off to Puma for putting this 5,200 pound axle on here because that's really necessary on this coach. This compartment right here is just going to be that pass through. That's the other side of it. So that's where that starts. Um, and you can put stuff in either side and take them out either side. This bed is a sideways queen bed. So it gives you a lot more outside space than let's say an island queen bed. If you look right here, you're going to have the dry weight. This is also going to tell you the length as manufactured. This is something fairly new. They didn't used to do this, so that, that's a plus. So if you're out there shopping, this is the sticker you want to see. That's going to be exactly the weight that it is on this unit when it rolled off of the plant there. They have to weigh each one so they can stamp it on the title. With that being said, the brochures that you see, if you've been shopping, they're going to be off 100 pounds or so, sometimes more, sometimes less, just depending on the options that the dealer puts on there. So something to keep in mind if you're having a small tow vehicle and you really need to be sure you're under the proper weight. So this one weighs 4,016 pounds as it sits. So then you got to add in all your stuff. That being said, the GVW on this is going to add it's going to be 5515 so you take that number subtract it from that that's how much weight you can actually put in here um, and this says the actual is a 5100 pounds so that's new they were always 52s but either way that's going to be the, the heavier axle so you can have more more space on the front of the coach here it's going to be where your propane is located a 30 pounder single tank because there's less gas options than there used to be. The refrigerator in this is a 12, um, so you're just gonna have your propane water heater and your propane furnace is gonna be really all that's using propane here. If you get down in here, you can see that this coach comes factory installed with a nice battery disconnect or shut off, however you wanna word that. It's a really nice feature for people because we're constantly dealing with dead batteries. People leave their stuff here for service. We service it and it sits there for three days before they're able to pick it up and they come to pick it up and their battery's dead. Um, so that's a really underrated tool in my mind. Um, if you don't have, sur if you don't have uh, solar already equipped to keep your batteries charged up, you definitely want to be using that shut off to keep your batteries charged. It's just better for your batteries. To, to stay charged and not be drained all the way down. Lead acid batteries are not meant to go down to zero, especially for a large number of times. So if you're having that problem, a battery disconnect is gonna help you tremendously with that. Um, that'll trash your battery faster than anything else. So power tongue jack located up here, nice little feature. It has a little plug underneath which is a cool thing they've been doing. That just keeps your seven way popped up in there. So that way bugs, you don't get corrosion, those types of things that stop or interfere that from working properly. So that's where that's stored. We're using it currently to power it up. And then they also have these nice little chain hooks located on here. Um, just makes it have a cleaner look so your chains are not hanging down. The Sideways front queen bed. I really like this floor plan for a single axle. 
This unit in particular features a couch and a dinette, which you very rarely see in something of this size, especially without a slide. This unit feels extremely large in here for no slide. So the slide is going to have weight and it's going to cost you extra money. So avoiding the slide helps a couple of those things if those are two things you're concerned about. Another thing without having a slide that people don't realize is the fact that this will stay heated and cooled better. In an RV, the slide box, as we refer to it, has rubber seal gaskets. That's kind of what keeps it, what we would say, watertight. That's going to let the hot and cold air in and out fairly easy because its job is to not be insulated, but simply stop the water from getting in. So no slides. It's going to stay warmer, going to stay cooler in the summer months when you're running the air conditioner. G air conditioner on this one. I believe this is a 13.5 without looking. This is a pretty small unit, but I would guess it's a 13.5 considering the size. Couple of charging ports here next to the bed, kind of nice. Cell phone, iPad, that kind of thing. 110 outlet located there. This couch will turn into a bed. This is what we refer to as a jackknife sofa. Um, and that's because the flip mechanism, that happens like so. So wanna sleep some kids there. Sleeping adults there can be difficult if they're tall. And then you've got this nice little cup holder flipped on there. We have our awning switch located here. That's gonna be for that full length awning like we noted on the outside, very simple, in and out. We've got some light switches located here. These top two are gonna be outside exterior lights with the inside being a main section of lights. With these little puck lights, they've got little buttons in the middle. So if I were to shut this off, um, it's not going to shut the rest of them off to do so. You just simply push the button right in the middle. Common question or error we have with these, the button hangs up. If you simply just pop the cap off, you can just reset the button and then it'll push again. Bluetooth radio here. It's also got normal FM, AM radio functions. You can save the channel searches here. Also HDMI, USB port here. This also comes with its own HDMI cord, so you can hook that up right to the TV. That will allow you to play off of the um, TV to the inside speakers or the outside speakers. So that's kind of nice. And you can shut those on and off by simply pushing the zone buttons. TV bracket here, pretty simple. Hook, hook a TV up to it. And it's got this little lock. You can kind of see me push or pull it. That's how you take that off there. And then when you have the TV on, you just push it till it snaps in place and you're good to go for travel. On top here, we have a King Connect pre-wired for Wi-Fi. We'll get into that in a separate video if you're interested in that. But that'll allow you to have your own Wi-Fi connection on board. Works similar to a hotspot if you're familiar with that is. TV booster and coax satellite hookup located here. Another little tip for you. If this light is on, it is using your battery power. So if you're off-grid camping, make sure that's off when you're not using the TV or the radio. Another little tip, the radio is actually amplified to the TV booster. So if you are camping, you wanna use the radio, go ahead and pop that booster on and it'll give you signal, it'll amplify that signal for the radio. If you park under a tree, there's nothing we can do about it. 110 outlet located here. Um, that's going to give you power for your TV. Cute little monitor panel here. This is going to be an important feature for people. This is where Puma and a lot of other brands put their switches for their water heater and water pump. So that's what those two are going to be right there. Your gas switch is going to be on the inside. Your electric switch will be on the outside. We haven't yet, but we'll do a video about that on the water heater itself. So you're going to have, and all you're going to do is just push these and you see the black tank there is going to show empty. The battery is going to say low because we just have our battery pack on fresh. Um, they use a generic monitor panel for pretty much all of these units. So just because it's listed on there doesn't mean your coach has it. A lot of these smaller units are just going to have one gray if they do have two tanks. 
Typically, they'll label one a galley and one a grey. Usually, the galley is going to be for the kitchen, um, but there's a million different opinions on that, so I'm not even going to go down that road. So, that's what that is. It's kind of nice. I tell people all the time, you cannot rely on these after long-term use. All it takes is a piece of toilet paper or spaghetti noodle to get stuck on one of those little diode sensors that are on the side of your tank, and it'll give you a false reading. This refrigerator is really neat. Um, they just started using these this year. It's got dual access doors. So if you actually pop that, the whole thing will come right off. So you want to make sure one side's latched before you do that, especially if it's full of food. So to open that, you're just going to hit this little switch here and then other side and they label it nice for you. You can open it either way. So if you're loading stuff, getting ready for the trip, you can use this way. When you're using the kitchen, you want to use this way. You come in from outside. So that's really a nice feature because they do get used both from both directions. And then freezer, a lot more freezer space than they used to give you on these 12 volt refrigerators, which is a very nice feature. I'm not even going to go down the road right now of gas versus 12 volt because another one of those things that everybody has opinion on, we can talk about that later. There's benefits to both, but this one has a 12 volt refrigerator. I like this model because it gives you an extra, I think, two and a half cubic feet without really putting the tape to it, but that's about what we are. Our converter is located here. This is going to be kind of your power control center. This is going to be all your 12 volt items located here, and they are listed, which is nice. And then your 110 breakers here. So you can shut them all off if you want to. Um, when the fuse is blown, it's pretty simple. Pop it out, pop it in, just little blade fuses. If you're an RVer or if you're new, I always tell people, have a handful of those fuses around because you never know when you might need it. Getting to the back of the coach here. Our furnace is located right underneath of there. Cute little furnace there. This is going to be non-ducted. This being such a small coach, really don't need the, duct the ducted uh, furnace vents there because it really is going to heat the whole thing without any issues. Some storage underneath of here. Little two burner cooktop cook top stove. No oven in this model. It's amazing to me the amount of people that don't ever use their ovens. The RV business has kind of shifted that way because they're, they're figuring that out too. Um, the space is better utilized as a cabinet, so that's kind of nice. And then I like this because you get the grease splatter spot. So you stop it from hitting back here. It's easier to clean this off than it is that. So that's kind of nice. Always make sure this is in the down and what I would say is locked position by pushing those rub rubber feet down there. Because that will rattle and break. Another thing to remember with that, after you've used it, keep the glass top up. Um, until it properly cools down and you can put that down without any problems. A little light on your range hood and then a fan located there. 110 microwave works like a regular microwave. Nothing's very complicated. We got to go up there. Another outlet there, there, and there. So they're definitely not skimping out on the outlets. Plenty of things to, to be able to plug in there. This little area in this coach is really an interesting concept to me. After COVID happened, people wanted to live remotely. Not that they didn't before, but now they want to live and work remotely. And so it's interesting to see the new concepts they're coming up with desk space. So you can actually work on site wherever that may be if you work from home. So that could be used as a desk. That could be used as where you put your garbage. You could put a little storage thing in there and store your shoes, clothes, whatever you may need. And then a little open face cabinet there. Just some nice little extra storage. This is going to be the furnace thermostat located here. Bathroom, not a whole lot special in there. Um, one thing that they have in this small unit that you won't normally see is a sink. And I know that might seem goofy if you're not familiar with smaller RV floor plans, but they a lot of times skimp out on the sink in the bathroom just to save space and save some money. So you get two sinks there. And then 
what I call the most important safety feature on an RV, your CO2 detector, and this one does propane as well. It's important that these are near the floor because CO2 is heavier. That little green light indicates that it has power and it's working. Another little tip that people don't know uh, usually is that those have a expiration date on it. So if you were to take that out and take a look at the expiration date, I believe there are five years on those. So if that starts chirping in the middle of the night, there's definitely a difference between, hey, I don't have enough power, like your battery's going dead, or something happened to your shore power. That'll give you the chirp. If you have an alarm, it's going to be very obnoxious and you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. Um, but it's saying it detects that. So always make sure you have that. Rather you have a new one, old one, or whatever you're camping in, always make sure you have a CO2 detector. It is not once, but probably twice or three times I hear of a horror story every summer about somebody putting their generator too close to somebody else's trailer or their own. And unfortunately, it is a gas that you cannot smell, so that can definitely hurt you. So you want to make sure that that is working. Also going to be a smoke detector. If you buy from us, we always make sure there's a battery in it. Um, so that's where that's located. You can test those by pushing that button, which I'm not going to do because it is horribly obnoxious. So that's that. That's going to be the end of our 18 RKX video. If you have questions, just let us know. We're happy to help you with whatever you may need. Hopefully I answered all your questions. Um, so let us know, like, and subscribe, please. Thank you.